Bara Saimano, uh, a member of the organizing committee of the Kenyan Multicultural Competition, the sixth edition 2018. I'm joined by the managing partner Mugambi and Tiga LMP, a firm that deals with legal consultancy, and Mr. Mugambi Mohammed has been one of our judges for the last six years in this edition. Uh, Mr. Mugambi, what would you say stands out for the last six years that you've partnered with Kenyan in the judging of this month? I think two things. One, uh, the level of consistency by the organizing committee to sit down, organize, and every year put up together or come up with a setup that can run this entire moot is actually commendable. It's not easy to put up together and bring universities across the country to participate in a competition like this. And two, the level of also consistency and involvement by faculties across the country. Uh, when the competition began, we only had a few universities, three to four universities participating. Now we have almost seven to ten law schools across the country participating in this event. I think that, uh, to me, is one of the key elements that has been consistent uh, throughout the competition in the last six years. And maybe lastly on that particular issue uh, is the level of expertise uh, that the competition impacts on its participants. Uh, you realize that every year the growth uh, of students grows uh, in the particular setting in which they're involved from the hypothetical question that the organizers give them to the drafting of the memorials. I think we can commend also the participants that there's an improvement every year. Why do you think it, it was important? Uh, the organizing committee put up striking the balance between national security and human rights. Why do you think students need to be involved in this conversation, especially law students, regarding this matter, especially at this time in our country? Uh, I think for, for a number of reasons, but few among them. Um, the opposition leader in Burma, Aung San Chi, while addressing uh, the Oxford Union, uh, talked about university life. And she had hoped that the external world outside Burma will bring university life in Burma itself that the students lacked. I think Moot Court generally is part and parcel of university life. And every law student needs to participate in a Moot or two to be able to experience or to get this unique experience in mooting generally. Number two, when you're talking about striking a balance between national security and human rights, uh, in contemporary Kenya, we have had problems and a clash between the opposition or citizens themselves and state apparatus. And that's where now you have a clash between national security and human rights. To me, legally speaking, I would say they are competing interests amongst each other. As one of my colleagues has noted that even the Attorney General himself conceded to the fact that it is a difficult line or a difficult uh, point to balance between national security and human rights. And from the past in Kenya, from 2013 general elections, after the 2017 general elections, youths have been more involved uh, in activism, in participating in open democracy, and therefore it is only natural enough that when such kind of a competition is put up, law students who are the future lawyers and advocates of this republic are involved to assist in tailoring the policy agreements in governments and to try and assist in the balancing of these two competing interests. Thank you so much. Uh, the last question will be, for the last six years, you have been a judge. How is the quality of the competition? How were, how were the presentations for the last two days in the competition as compared to other years that you've started the bench? Uh, I think every year brings out a unique set of characters uh, in the moot, uh, meeting one. Uh, this year we have had an improvement in the drafting of memorials. We have seen students being involved uh, in extensive research. Uh, but over the years, for the last six years, there has been a slight improvement in terms of presentation of oral arguments, uh, generally speaking. So at least from a judge's perspective, I can sit back and say the competition is doing some good to students because it is doing that which was not, uh, no one was able to do the last six years. So that means the level of students who are coming out from our law schools is improving uh, wholly. And lastly, speaking on the level of students or the kind of expertise that they have, 
Mutin can assist our students in a number of things, but few amongst them is the improvement of oratory skills and your research skills. I think moving forward, the organizers need to put more emphasis on the drafting of memorials, which will assist the students will go a long way to help them when they're in actual practice to dealing with the drafting of pleadings. I think that would be a significant step forward uh, for the entire competition and a benefit to the students. What will be your last one? Uh, I think there are a lot of things I can say, uh, but few amongst them is that we, we, when I say we, I mean on behalf of all judges, we'd like to thank the organizers and we hope the organizers will still continue to engage the sponsors so that they can continue to uh, assist in the entire competition run year after year. And number two is to encourage students across the country, law students who want to take part in this. Apart just from traveling across the globe and improving your oratory skills and helping you with your research skills, many given set of facts at least, it will assist you to tailor your personality as a lawyer because you will meet different sorts of people. But ultimately, in conclusion, Moting generally helps you improve your bar of tolerance because you will hear arguments from the other side which are very uncomfortable, but you will have to tolerate them. So Moting gives us or and the students themselves that space, that vacuum of tolerance, which now is the reason why we have a clash between these two competing interests, national security and human rights, because the bar of tolerance is still very low and needs to be raised in the country. Thank you so much for your message. Thank you. I'm joined by Irene Ikumu, the program coordinator here with both Stifton, who are part of the sponsors of this year's edition. Thank you for uh, allowing us to interview you. Um, the first question becomes, what is the main inspiration behind you even coming in on board to sponsor this year's edition? I think that our inspiration is two things. One, specifically for this year, is the interest in the topic of discussion. Um, I think it's a very relevant theme. Um, discussing one, the state's responsibility around the protection of human rights in this country, but also looking at, at the limitations of those rights and how um, upcoming lawyers can then start to look at how to debate and address these issues and aware of these issues because these are issues that are affecting the country. As the Henry Ball Foundation um, in Eastern Horn of Africa, we do support three core uh, areas um, around gender democracy, sustainable development, and regional international dialogue. And within that, like to look at issues of human rights and democracy, um, and with a special focus on civil society and citizens. So for us, this is you know an important discussion that helps highlight some things that um, one not just governments should be should be aware of, but also lawyers. Um, but then also the second reason is just the idea that you can support more knowledge for different students and networking, um, because you know the Moot Court has about you know over twelve universities that are coming together to share knowledge and, and ideas, um, and this type of dialogue is something that's core to our, our our work. Why is it important in the involvement the involvement of the youth in the contemporary issues of this country? What is your thinking behind? Why should the youth be involved in thinking and? Um, not just the thinking, but even the policy making around the contemporary issues of, 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 of this country, because this year's edition is talking about striking the balance between national security and human rights. Mm -hmm. Why is it important that then we involve students in this conversation? I think, I mean, involving young people, is, it, it should be a no-brainer for any country that has the statistics like Kenya. Um, young people are the majority in this country and they should be participating very actively in some of these discussions. They should be aware of how the state is run, um, how this country is governed, and what the core issue of the big issues are coming up. Um, with students who are in law schools now, these are going to be the lawyers in the future, and you want that the crop of lawyers that do come out in the future can approach cases with a human rights lens and are conscious of the rights of people. Um, because you find that uh, you know a lot of legal institutions have started to set up legal aid, but that's not enough. What you want is an entire generation of lawyers who are very conscious and put the rights of citizens at the center and, uh, and have spaces to be comfortable enough to debate these ideas and to propose solutions for them. Okay. Um, this competition started yesterday and it's ending today. 
what would you say stand out of the main things that have been more that have caught your eye throughout the competition the participation of students the judging the mood court and even the food <laughs> um i would say two things have have stood out I think one is the, um, the level of interest from different organizations. I think I've been really impressed by how many organizations have chosen to support the, the MOOC process and have added their weight behind it um, and are really contributing to the knowledge and sharing for students. But I think also one, just the fact that the MOOC codes promote dialogue. Um, at the Henry Ford Foundation, we are very interested in not just dialogue, but how different perspectives can come together. And with the problem that, that students are addressing this year, it's, it's, a, it's an issue that Kenya is really addressing. It's a very contemporary issue. How do you balance the right of citizens versus important issues like national security? You know, because these are both very good issues that need to be prioritized. But how do you ensure that um, a focus on one does not lose the priority of the other? Um, and I'm really glad that the Attorney General came, came in yesterday and in his remarks also you know, highlighted kind of the struggles that the office has to, has to go through. How do you address terrorism, but also still protect the right of people to be able to associate and to demonstrate? Um, and these are the issues that young, you know, the, the motors have had to, to struggle with. You know, where does the, the role of the police start and where does it end? And at what point does a policeman go beyond just quelling a demonstration to actually abusing someone's right to demonstrate? What would you say are your closing remark? Uh, the last things you would say about this competition? Um, I would say that it's 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 been a fantastically and well organized mood court competition, although it's the first one that I've attended, and I'd like to congratulate the committee, the organizing committee for putting this together um, and being able not just to bring together all these universities, but also these different organizations that are working in this space and have the thematic knowledge to be able to share and help um, the next generation of lawyers. Thank you, Ada. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Martin Marangina, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for honoring our invite. Why would the discussion around national security and human rights be so important to you that you then agree to even sponsor this competition? Thank you. I think the discussion around uh, national security and human rights is very important and critical to our, our organization because it's something that we've worked on over the years. Uh, since our establishment, we've done uh, a series of activities that are aimed at reforming Kenya's police service. Uh, as you may be aware, over the last five years, there have been numerous statistics in Kenya that, uh, that seem to suggest that a lot of youth have been killed by the police service. And uh, that is a bad precedent uh, that has been set by, by that, that it's a bad precedent that has been set by a country like Kenya. And uh, of critical importance, why the discussion in this mode is very important for us as an institution is because, you know, it, as in one of our uh, as one of our strategic ob uh, objectives, we deal with security sector reform. So it is my belief that you know this will go a long way into addressing this issue. The issue of extrajudicial execution is an issue that affects youth, it affects students, it affects all of us. You're aware, uh, as you may be aware, of the late, you know, a student leader was killed in May. And that is something that we're trying to address. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that we have to address now, and it starts with the youth. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that then that informs the reason why you would even want to involve students in, in this conversation. And why is it specific, or why would the conversation now, at this time, go around law students other than those other students in the country? The reason why I would think uh, the conversation would go to law students is because uh, Law students are sparring advocates. They're the ones who have always been looked at, you know, to deal with these issues. And uh, it's only prudent that, you know, we, we train law students on how to articulate and urge out uh, cases of such nature. When you look at uh, our court system in Kenya, not very many decisions are present, you know. Not very many decisions have been arrived at in, in as far as police accountability is concerned. For instance, if you looked at the statistics over the, over the last five years, Right, vis-a-vis -vis the number of uh, state prosecutions, you know, there are very few cases. We actually, are actually, on, as of now, we have about three cases that are, uh, where we have police uh, police officers, in which police officers have successfully been uh, prosecuted by the state. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would be important to also note this year. Um, the last question would be: Do you think that then you coming in to sponsor this competition, 
your objectives as an institution have been met and have your expectations by the expectations that you had when you even supported this competition have they been met so far and how has been the experience for the last two days? I think uh, as an institution our objectives have been met uh, we're quite impressed with the students grasp of laws especially the laws that deal with policing vis-a-vis -vis, you know the factual cases that they've given the application of the law it's quite impressive and like I would say the future is right for these young students yes. the last thing you would want to say well, the last thing I would want to say is that I would want to just thank you know the organizer, the organizers of this MOOC, the partners. Uh, this in itself presents an opportunity that we look as an institution we look forward you know to working with you know different universities and trying to advance, champion and advance for human rights per se. We, not, we, we do not come into this just because it's you know one issue that touches on one. Uh, it's 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 an issue that touches on one of the thematic areas you know we work on, but we look at it as you know a beginning of a long-term partnership. So. You can consider us, you know, as long-term partners, and partnership begins with a journey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure hosting you. Thank you. Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle.